So I'm trying to be incognito here, but I just want you guys to know at home, for the rest of this trip, I'm gonna take creeper shots with this camera, because this is a perfect creeper cam, but I'm only gonna creep on on the fellow press. So uh, we'll see what we get here without them knowing. Welcome back DP Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here from DP Review and we are coming to you from beautiful Monterey, California. Now, I should say we're actually out here for the Sony condo trip. You know, they're, they're being really great. They flew us out here, they put us up. We are gonna review the RX-10 Mark IV. So I wanna mention, Jordan's actually shooting the whole episode on his RX-10 Mark IV as well. So you're gonna see the footage from that and he's doing it handheld with autofocus, which is again, something he hates to do. It should be a good test or it's gonna look like crap, I don't know. And I should mention that, you know, coming into the RX-10 Mark IV review, I've used the other RX-10s and frankly, I've never been jazzed by a bridge camera. But but it's perfect for travel, it's convenient. And even though I think it's a great mom and dad's camera and you know, perfect for soccer games, to me this is the minivan of cameras. I'm gonna get in the proverbial minivan, so to speak. I'm gonna give it a good test because I do want to try some of these powerful features today. And at the heart of this, you've got their one inch, 20 megapixel stack CMOS chip. Essentially what that means is you've got a processor and built-in memory right behind the sensor itself. It enhances the throughput. We're going to talk about that today because it really does have a lot of benefits. But by far one of the most exciting things on this camera is it borrows an autofocusing system very similar to the Sony A9. 325 points, 65% phase detection autofocus coverage. This is fantastic. I mean, you know, when we talk about it in terms of shooting sports, wildlife, kids soccer games, you know, pets, running children, all that kind of stuff. This camera's gonna do a great job, but it's not all perfect. And I do have some complaints and I think they would mostly go towards people who want to use this for very serious wildlife and sports photography. A couple things. First off, although you can change the rate of the zoom, and this is still going to be something that slows you down. You're zooming in, you're zooming out, and you're waiting for this to go. And it's slow, especially when you want to shoot something quick. It's also slow when you turn the camera on for the first time and you want to get a quick shot. So that's unfortunate. On top of that, when you are back button focusing in continuous AF, you can't zoom the lens. Not a big deal if you're, you know, just shooting casual but if you're tracking a soccer player coming towards you or a bird in flight or something, you might find that limiting. So some people who are very serious are gonna have some issues with that. So, you know, with all this water and sand around, it does make me uh, think about the fact this camera is weather sealed, which is gonna be a nice kind of peace of mind. Again, I'm not gonna drop in the sand, I'm not gonna get it wet, but certainly if you're out shooting a football game or something or a kid's soccer game and there's a little bit of drizzle, you don't have to worry, you can stay out a few minutes longer. Okay, so I see Dan Bercalia here from DP Review as well. Dan, what are you doing with that creeper camera? You see uh, you see Jared out there? Yeah, you can't miss the fro. You see that fro blowing in the breeze? <laughs> it's the perfect camera for it. Ah, see, I'm collecting, I'm collecting press guys as well. I've got Kish on here. Okay. I'm gonna try to get Gordon Lang and Anthony as well, but yeah. I'll trade you, uh, I'll trade you a Kish for that Jared Poland oh, picture. Oh, get out of here, man. I'm hanging on to Jared. Oh. All right, so I'm trying to take a picture of some of the muscles here against the water. It brings up actually a few points I want to talk about. So first off, we've got this horizontal flipping screen, which is great, but I want to go vertical, and of course it won't rotate that direction. So I'm just going off the back screen. I've cranked it all the way up to the maximum brightness. Uh, I can see, okay, but at the same time, it's going to hurt my battery life. And with 400 shots on these much maligned W batteries, I do have to be careful. I'm down to 73% already. On top of that, I also want to note that I do have a touch screen. It is fantastic because this camera does not have a joystick control. It's not bad, a little laggy, but that's Sony. But I can also bring it up to my eye and I can still move it around with my thumb and that will basically have to replace your joystick. Again, serious wildlife sports photographers might find that frustrating, but you know, if you're just trying to do average stuff, quick action, it works fine. Now, when it comes to one inch sensors, the, a lot of people kind of rag on the fact that it's very hard to get shallow depth of field shots. I'd agree with that, except on this particular camera, because we have such a long range, 24 to 600 millimeters, with actually a relatively fast 2.4 to f4 aperture, 
if, if you're okay with compression and you can get some distance, you can actually get some buttery smooth backgrounds. Now it's funny, uh, I, this clicky ring, I still haven't gotten used to it, even though this is the fourth version of this camera that I've tested. But I do wanna make a point here. I mean, this is a 24 to 600, it's a 2.4 to F4, which is great. But I do wanna talk about just how diffraction happens. And basically, as you get to higher apertures on any cameras, you start pushing really high F numbers, really tight apertures, you start to get a general softness. Now, because this is a small sensor you're basically going to start to see that sooner than you would on other cameras now thankfully this lens does have fairly fast aperture choices on this camera you don't want to go any higher than 5.6 to f8 without getting to some serious soft territory and so again it's just a point on these one inch cameras you're not going to get much aperture choice to play with so I know this is overdone all the time on the older Sonys, but we're spoiled by the new Z slash Z type batteries. I guess I have to do both now. Uh, but damn these W batteries to hell because they just don't last very long. And on top of that, the RX10 Mark IV, they don't supply you an external charger. Luckily though, you can charge it off USB power. So that is some advantage there. But you know, I mean, Jordan's even mentioning his battery's getting low and he's shooting video. So I have now we do have a focus limiter. That's a new feature for the RX10 Mark IV, which again, enhances its already excellent autofocus performance. If you're focusing at distance, you don't have to worry about it trying to hunt all the way through the minimum areas. But we also still have the classic threaded cable release, which is such an oddity on a camera like this. I think aesthetically it looks beautiful. And you know, with the new menus now lacking any sort of intervalometer app, Jordan can at least get a stopwatch out and a classic threaded cable release and you know, just do it the old fashioned way. It's weird they took out those apps, but yeah, you can still get an aftermarket intervalometer and pop it into the multi-port here. So what I wanna talk about next is just general image quality on the one inch sensors here. But one of the great things about being affiliated with Deep Review is Dan can talk about it. He knows all the expert stuff and I can take a break. So off to Dan. Dan here to talk about image quality. Now we've seen the sensor in this camera before in the RX105, but with a camera like this, it's just as much about the sensor as it is the lens. And now this has the same lens actually as the RX10 III, which we did a full test at every focal length to confirm that it is actually sharp. And our testing showed that actually, yes, from 24 all the way to 600 millimeters, you have a really sharp lens. So when you combine that with this good 20 megapixel, one inch backside illuminated sensor, you get excellent image quality from 24 all the way to 600. Ultimately, for the price of this camera, you can get better image quality in other bodies, but you'd be hard put to get a camera that offers such a useful zoom range. Hey everyone, it's Jordan way off in the distance here to talk about the RX10 IV for video. And its big strength is the zoom range. Chris is zooming in on me right now and it is really impressive. And I've loved the RX10 series as a travel option for a long time. The RX10 II I thought was an almost perfect travel camera. The RX10 III I thought was a bit of a letdown because we got the huge awesome zoom range and very sharp lens that we've got on this camera here. But the trade-off was we lost the built-in neutral density filter I found extremely useful. Today I'm screwing neutral density filters onto the front of the lens. But also the aperture went from a constant 2.8 to a 2.4 to f4. So you gotta, you know, I kind of hope that Chris didn't start this shot at 2.4 or it got a lot darker as he was zooming. 5.6! Okay. Uh, apparently he did it properly, but if I'm going to zoom with this, I only ever want to use F4 to F8 roughly. Uh, it is a bit of a drawback to it, but that's the trade-off for getting this insane range. So the big headline change coming from the RX10 3 to the 4 was the inclusion of phase detect autofocus. And this is a big deal, and if you've got a static frame, the tracking is unbelievably good on it. It's just like what we're seeing on A7-3s, A7-R3s until you start to zoom the lens. Now I can see why they don't enable continuous autofocus while you're zooming in stills, because in video, it really makes it struggle. In that opening scene, you can see it was wobbling quite a bit while it was tracking in on me. As well, this does have stabilization on it, but it's just lens based. And you do really see a lot of roll in the footage, especially when you're shooting at kind of the 400 to 600 millimeter range. It's really difficult to control that. And I wish the camera did a better job of keeping that in check. So let's do another test here. We got a static frame and you can see how quickly the face detect just jumps onto my face, but does a nice smooth transition over to it. It's a really nice aesthetic. Now, one other thing I really like with this camera is the slow motion capability. And you can record 120 frames per second with sound continuously with it. So you can do nice long slow-mo clips, but of course the real fun is in the super slow motion. This'll do 240 frames at almost 1080, beautiful quality, or you can do 480 and 960 at 
pretty bad quality. Uh, it's awesome to have the option for that. I use the 240 a lot, but the interface is really cumbersome for it. You have to preset your shots. Once you're ready to roll, you have to go into their standby mode, which locks all of your camera settings, including manual focus, which is a real issue for the way that I shoot. And then you can capture your brief slow-mo clips. It's cool to have the flexibility, but you're really pre-planning, setting up your slow-mo shots. You're not gonna grab them in any sort of documentary sense. I don't think enough people are talking about how good the image quality on the RX-10 IV is. And there's a very minor crop when you're shooting in 4K, it's a 1.09 crop factor with that. But the great thing is it's super sampling that area of the sensor. So it's very sharp. As well, rolling shutter is very well controlled because of the stacked sensor design on this. Dynamic range on it is excellent because we've got access to the S-Log2 profile, but it's still quite good if you're using our preferred Cine2 Picture Profile 6. Now, low light is the one strike on that, and that's because it is a one inch type sensor. But if you compare it to the other cameras with the same sensor, this is the top of the pack. Only thing is, I wish they had brought that RX10 II lens that I love with the 24 to 200 with the built-in ND, the constant 2.8 aperture with the phase detect from this. So I want an RX10 II II. Sony, make that happen. I would pick up three of those things. Hey, uh, Stripes, what are you taking pictures of over here? Stripes! Yeah, okay, I guess I've got Stripes on. I've set my back button AEL for AF on, right. but it's a little bit lower than I normally like. I wish I could set the movie button, because I'm never going to touch that. Exactly. Right? That's Jordan's job. But you can't. You can't customize it. Uh, the other thing, too, the zoom. You know, like, I'm finding I'm trying to get precise framing, and the zoom moves in pretty big increments, you know? So you got to remember just to, like, actually use your legs and move back and forth. See, I just started a movie, and I said I'd never do that. <laughs> So as you can clearly see behind me, we're in downtown Monterey. We took the camera store bus, but of course it's not our bus anymore. So we're just gonna leave it here. I'm sure they'll find it. All right, so we just had a great time downtown Monterey. The light's going down, but we got to shoot this street market. It was really cool. And uh, I have some observations about the camera now just using it in that way. And I mean, I love street photography. First off, I found with this dark light, I was underexposing quite a bit. And that's really just because I know I can pull the shadows up on this sensor. So again, protect those highlights. Don't worry about the shadows. I can bring it up, keep my eyes so fairly low. My real complaints were this. I mean, the autofocus is quick. The problem is still walking around the street. I see something I want to shoot. I turn the camera on and I got to wait before I can take a picture. And I know that delay doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're trying to get just a, a grab shot of somebody really quickly, you don't want to miss that moment. It does get a little bit tricky. Overall though, I didn't think I'd like this camera for street photography, but it performed very well. Okay, so I'm shooting here in the Monterey Sea Aquarium, and this is a tough test for the RX-10 Mark IV because one-inch sensors, if they do have a weakness, it's low light. That being said, we're shooting 3200, 6400. It's punishing stuff in here. You can see softness in the images, and that's just something you're gonna have to live with on this camera. I've been surprised. Autofocus and stills, not bad considering how low light it is here. So we're almost at the end, and I almost forgot to say, this camera's incredibly fast, unlike this golf cart. It can shoot up to 24 frames per second with electronic shutter, and because it's a stacked CMOS sensor, you have very minimal rolling shutter. So, you know, feel free to shoot this thing in very quick action sequences using that mode. It works great. If you want more information, don't forget to check out the RX-10 Mark IV review at dpreview.com. All right, well, that about does it for our Sony condo trip. And I had fun time with the RX-10 Mark IV. And I think the takeaways that really impact this camera, it's got amazing autofocus, you know, fantastic feature set. 
The customizability though on the handling is a little bit of a tricky thing. And for me, the biggest downside was the zoom speed and just waiting for the zoom to turn on. I think overall, you guys got a good taste of the camera and really, I think the polarizing thing is gonna be the price point. That's really what's gonna determine if this is a camera that's gonna suit you. It is the ultimate minivan of cameras, but it's a fully loaded, expensive minivan. So if you just want something to take traveling nice and practical, maybe this isn't the best choice, but if you're willing to spend the money and you wanna get the best of the best for an all-in-one convenient camera, this is certainly a powerful contender. You know, the one inch sensors really spawned an entire industry. You've got a lot of great choices here. And to be honest, you know, throughout this whole trip, I didn't really feel undergunned until I got into low light situations. The aquarium and some of my adventures out here in the dark at night got a little bit tricky, no doubt. But if you don't need the creativity, the interchangeable lens capability, but you still want a camera that's going to get you the shot, get it in focus and do it quickly. I think the RX-10 Mark IV is a great choice as long as you got the funds for it. I hope you guys found that helpful. Goodbye to beautiful California. I'm gonna miss you again, but uh, don't forget, check out our comments below. Leave some of your own. Go to our Instagram pages, please. Check out our Twitter feeds. Let us know what you think. And please do remember that this is a brand new channel. We appreciate the support, but we want it to grow. And that means subscriptions matter right now. So please, if it's not too much trouble, I implore you, just go up top and click that little button. But otherwise, we've got another great, exciting review coming for you guys very soon. Until then.